Hello, this is Badridge. I got a lot of things um, to cover in this video, at least that's what I have planned. Um, also, Pale Moon updated now, so I can use <laughs> the new, in quotation marks, uh, YouTube studio here. So that's why this looks like this. This is the first time I log in here, so whatever. Um, so, I just uh, uploaded a new... No, oh, this is not mine. This is mine. A new uh, repository to GitHub here under Budridge Load KB. And it's a, a script that um, can load custom keyboard layouts uh, for XKB, which is like the X uh, window systems, window manager, whatever, you know, Xorg's uh, keyboard thing. <laughs> which is a very weird uh, thing. It also includes my own personal uh, layout here that I use here. And it looks more or less like this, or let's open the file because it's located here. Um, this is uh, the, the layout file. And as you can see, most of it is comments here. Um, So if you don't, uh, if you if you download this and execute the script here, uh, it will, by default, use that uh, uh, bud kb layout in the symbols directory here. But you can uh, pass uh, any symbols definition file uh, as the argument to the script, and then it will use that symbols file uh, and and create a layout and and uh, apply it automatically, and then nice thing with this is that it uh, doesn't install or nice i don't know maybe that is not what you want but it doesn't install uh, the layout on the system or anything and you can quite easily uh, modify and experiment with your uh, layout because i just uh, found out how to do this uh, prior to this i had like uh, a different custom layout that i had to do some tricks to and install it to the system and stuff uh, but this is more convenient in my opinion you don't need any root privileges on it, on anything and, and it's more easy to to have it version controlled and what not and this is uh, the whole script here as usual it's like uh, the help function here is larger than the script itself so um let's not get into this how this why this works because uh, instead uh, um, maybe we should start here uh, why i i went in down this uh, rabbit hole once again you know um it all started a couple of days ago uh, i clicked on a link on lobsters uh, which took me to this uh, page here, which is uh, some weird old uh, uh, custom keyboard layout. It, and yeah, it's very, very strange. It's like a, a single one hand, uh, left hand Dvorak. Or isn't it even a single handed? Only with your left hand, you're, you're supposed to be able to use this <laughs> custom Dvorak lay, uh, uh, layout. And it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the most extreme layouts I've ever seen. Uh, and I kind of like this to just uh, look at people's weird custom keyboard layouts. I don't know why uh, I find it uh, amusing and interesting, but it's cool, you know, to see how the custom stuff people set up, you know. And one thing that caught my eye on this layout is that Alt-GR uh, here is... Uh, uh, moved to the caps lock position and when I saw that it, it kind of something clicked in my brain because I I have been using a custom uh, layout myself but <laughs> not uh, this uh, extreme it, it's like the normal US layout but with the Swedish characters uh, on the same location as on a Swedish keyboard that uh, I could uh, print by uh, using alt gr as a modifier other than that it was just a normal us layout kind of we we get back to this soon uh, and i 
I, I thought this this has been fine, you know. Yeah, here is that uh, layout, by the way. This is the one I, I have been using, uh, Seba here. I think I made a video about this, but I couldn't find that video. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I mentioned and talked about my Swedish layout and how much I dislike the, the normal Swedish keyboard layout. Uh, and I think I will talk a little bit about it in, in this video too. Uh, but with this uh, Coffee++ plus plus layout here and the Alt-GR uh, modifier on the caps lock position, that makes m much more sense uh, even for my small modification since the Swedish characters are located somewhere here on the keyboard and the Alt-GR modifier is located here. Or I got these, uh, I actually made a, a little representation of it here in Inkscape. So this is uh, the default Alt-GR location, uh, which is a key. I, I don't think it's called Alt-GR on um, US keyboards. And also here you can see this is uh, the US layout, but it is on a uh, European or Nordic keyboard, which have this large Enter key and this small Shift key. And this small shift key, it actually makes room for one extra key on this bottom row. I'm not sure that uh, everyone knows that, but this key doesn't exist on a, a US keyboard, for example. And the narrow en enter key here on a US keyboard, the enter key uh, spans over two keys here. So we also get one extra key here, but we get, get one... Well, th this whole uh, spot here on a US keyboard is uh, is a... Uh, uh, an extra key that we don't have and that key uh, is moved here automatically when you set the US layout on, on a uh, keyboard with this uh, hardware layout so to speak but this key uh, is um, that's extra so we actually have one uh, more key on, on uh, these types of keyboards which you easily can recognize by this gigantic stupid enter key I think I actually brought up a page here. This is the keyboard I have right now. And I have to say, this, this is a great keyboard. Uh, extremely uh, cheap here. This is like uh, for a new keyboard. Uh, this is about $20, I guess. Um, uh, and it's just a normal rubber dome, stupid, cheap Logitech keyboard. But here we can see the big enter key here, and here is the alt gr key. Well, on this, this is a weird, this has to be a British uh, layout because it doesn't have the Swedish uh, characters there. Um, so, the reason I started using or switching these things up is because uh, I, I was actually having using a I was using a keyboard with the US NC, uh, I think it's called layout, you know, with uh, this one. Um, and immediately I noticed how much better it is, how much more sane and sober all the special characters are placed. Uh, because on the Swedish keyboard, which looks like this, <laughs> look at this mess. Uh, the characters I have made pink circles around this, 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 and also this, I forgot that, or maybe that, I, uh, one of these, this I think, are characters that aren't uh, uh, on the US ANSI keyboard. So it's actually seven uh, more characters. For some reason, it, it would be more than enough with these three here. Um, and when they created this uh, idiotic uh, layout here, they moved all special characters around to make room for these new Im important characters here. Uh, which meant, and, and the solution was to move those characters up here on the number row, most of them. And then make them accessible with the Alt-GR key, meaning 
just just the the hand position is like crazy. How how are you supposed to to type these characters? How are how are you supposed to type this uh, backslash character here in an ergonomic way? It's like you hold your thumb down here and your pinky up here. You know, it's it's the right hand. It's 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 not good. And it's like it's not like it's uncommon characters here. We have backslash, we have curly brace, we have brackets, dollar sign, uh, and the the characters I have made red rings around are characters that are moved, uh, that are not on the same position uh, and the same key as they are on uh, the US keyboard. And that also goes for these green <laughs> rings here. And these are the worst of all of them, because these are also uh, on the default Swedish layout. Uh, and if you just plug in a Swedish keyboard, these are also dead keys. And that means uh, the default key here, and si since it is three different characters on this key, for example, that means that this one is the default symbol here. Uh, and when we hold shift, we will access the second layer. And then, then we get this symbol. And alt gr is this third symbol here. And the same goes for this one here. So this is default, this is shift, and this is alt gr. To, here, here is also the pipe symbol, <laughs> how you access that, you know. Uh, but dead keys here, that means that uh, if we hold shift here, press this key, then nothing will happen. Then it will wait uh, for a key to append this dead key symbol to. Uh, because you know, there are some, some uh, characters in, in some European languages I know that uh, uses this carrot as a hat for their uh, character. So you, you press shift this key, release these keys, and then press C for example, and then you will get a C with a hat. Uh, and if you only want to print the caret, which is something that you want all the time if you're writing, for example, regular expressions, you know. Then you have to press shift, this key, release these keys, press space, then you get the caret. <laughs> and the same for the tilde, you know, that's also something that you write a couple of hundred times a day, it feels like some sometimes, you know. Insane, insane mode. Uh, there is uh, a more or less official software uh, layout that is available on um, in the XKB and also like on Windows or whatever. That's called like uh, Swedish layout no dead keys that, that kind of uh, works around this dead key issue here. But you still have the insane position of, on, of everything. So that's why I started using the US uh, layout. And the Seba layout, which is like the US layout with the Swedish characters. But now when I moved, uh, or when I saw that coffee uh, layout with the Alt GR here, I, I, I just tested it out, moved, uh, remapped Alt GR to Caps Lock and tested it, and it felt much better right away. And um, I immediately thought that this is also this also makes it possible uh, to to add more. Um, alternative uh, symbols and the first thing that came to mind was to remap um, the arrow keys to H, J, K and L you know so you get something like a, a Vim like uh, uh, navigation if you want to with Alt GR but the arrow keys uh, and that yeah that that doesn't really work when you have the Alt GR here you know that that hand position is almost uh, it's painful <laughs> but here it's fine but the thing is I, I have been uh, or it was a long time ago since I remapped the caps lock here to control and also escape if you tap caps lock and to, to achieve this escape on tap I was using an external uh, program called called escape but that's another thing I, I discovered just before I recorded this video I I just found that it's it's easy to achieve that uh, escape tap functionality and still having control on the same key with with using um, the XKB uh, custom uh, uh, symbol layouts. 
because these custom XKB symbol layouts, that's something that you kind of need to have installed if you're using a keyboard and XORG. So with my new technique here now, I can get rid of one more uh, dependency on my system. And also Xscape was, uh, it's not super slow, but it creates a small delay. Pressing, uh, using caps lock as an escape uh, was like slower and almost noticeable, no, noticeable, whatever, slower than a normal escape press. Uh, but now when I use, use the XKB, I could definitely see that it and feel that it's faster and, and more feels more native. So the the layout I ended up with, yeah, it looks like this. So now I have Alt G R here on that extra key, you know, because that uh, that have these angle brackets on the pipe, and I have gotten so used now to uh, the the U S layout, so I I actually use these when I when I need to print. The angle brackets and the, I use this key for the pipe uh, and stuff so I actually never use this extra key anymore and it it have kind of a good location also to to act as an extra modifier I could I guess also have used the control the control key since I already have that on caps lock but I think this is a better position than this uh, I hope I can uh, just stop using this control all together and having this key here also makes it easy to press this. Um, yeah, let's bring that. Now it's easy to press both uh, this modifier and this modifier, and maybe shift uh, and, and, and the arrow keys at the same time. And also control is also uh, in, a, in, in reach here. So it, it really works uh, uh, using the arrow key navigation. And that was kind of the missing piece uh, for me um, to, to be able to disable the vintage package in Sublime, which is something I've been using for more than two years now, two and a half year or something. I've been uh, using like uh, Vim navigation in Sublime and for quite some time, I'm sorry, there's some car alarm uh, that has been going on and off the, this whole afternoon and I'm getting a bit tired of it it's also getting a bit late so I don't I'm not sure if this will last the whole night here we'll see whatever um, so uh, yeah I'm getting really distracted by this there it stopped for five minutes so Sublime, uh, Vim Navigation, for, for quite some time I have felt that it, it isn't optimal to use uh, modal navigation in Sublime. It is actually not good at all. It doesn't work well with multiple selections and multiple cursors also, but uh, specifically multiple selections. And it has to do with uh, the way uh, VI modal navigation is is uh, 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 art architectured or or how to say it you know because you have normal mode insert mode and uh, visual mode and but in Sublime when you use multiple selections and this uh, VI vintage package to enable Vim uh, modal mode. That makes it so so that you can actually select text even if you are not in visual mode, and and that kind of it just makes everything uh, uh, work uh, much worse. Uh, so it made it, it kind of made Sublime less good, and it also made uh, VI mode uh, or Vim navigation modal navigation much worse than it actually is because. I think it's it's a great system. It's 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 really good. I really like Vim, and I I think modal navigation is great. But I don't think it's better uh, for me. I I'm so used. I, I I've been using Sublime for for like 10, 12 years or something. So I am so used and, and like uh, these multiple selections and cursors and stuff and a lot of other things in Sublime as well. 
So I've been wanting to switch away uh, from this uh, Vim navigation here and use Vim in Vim and Sublime in Sublime, you know. Uh, but of course, if, if I would just uh, disable this package, then I would have to start using the arrow keys again and using like normal, you know, control and uh, uh, shift control and stuff. Th this is how I used to, to edit text. I often just selected text, you know, to see uh, yeah, what text I was working with. And then I could delete that text, cut that text, replace whatever. But I, I use selections all the time when I, when I edit and, and that really doesn't work with with like vi mode it's it's like the opposite almost uh, but i really didn't want to go back to to this either because that meant i had to start using the arrow keys and i, I the arrow keys is even worse than using uh, it's much worse than using vim mode in sublime but now with this new layout that's this is the perfect uh, uh, middle ground for me i feel here now i'm not sure i just installed this just uh, created this script and stuff here and added this left down up right here uh, and also added home and page up and page down here page up page down and page up i have actually mapped those in sublime to uh, uh, changing tabs uh, because i i've kept a lot of the uh, vim uh, control keys like control f for page down and stuff like that and control E and control Y to scroll uh, line by line and, and things like that, you know. Um, but all the modal and normal mode is, is more or less uh, out of Sublime now in my config. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing and as, uh, as you could see there, I uploaded uh, the script to GitHub. It's uh, you can just clone this, uh, run this, and, but, but then you will have this Swedish layout. And uh, yeah, maybe we should take a look at how this works. Um, 22 minutes. Let's open it in Sublime instead. Here is that bud kb uh, file here. And first, this might look very daunting and how this works, you know. And it is kind of a weird system. It's it's actually very weird. And I have a great link down here. Uh, this guy has written a good uh, guide on this whole XKB uh, configuration system. But in short here, you can define symbols. Uh, and you have to specify if it's a default or if it's a partial uh, map. It can also be... A hidden map I think can replace this or whatever then you have to specify what types of keys are included in this symbol list or whatever and here I specify both alphanumeric and modifier I, I have uh, wh what I can see it doesn't really matter uh, which ones you add here I, I think you can even leave it out uh, and inside and, and then your name name this symbols list and then you can access these symbols uh, by uh, using the include here so here i include a symbol called typo and this uh, is uh, located in in the system install of xkb so you can find it yeah let's find this typo file first here it's kind of a funny layout file here and it's located here, USR share x11 xkb symbols. That's where uh, the default symbols uh, live. And, and you can enable these without using MyScript or anything. It, they are already installed for you. So some of these are like uh, language uh, layouts. Here is the Swedish uh, layout. And different, and these files have different uh, types, I guess we can call them. So here we have basic. And we have one that's called SC. So if we just include SC here, it will load this file. Or no, it will load the basic file here, which in turn includes uh, SE. I guess that's because this is default. This line here belongs to this. So 
if we just include SE, it will load the base uh, uh, one here. But we could also specify, like they do here, include SE, SE, and then it would load this and not the, the basic one. Then we wouldn't get the Latin type 2, whatever here. Uh, and here we can see we have one um, that, that is called no dead keys. That is just what I talked about. It, it tries to um, uh, change that dead key behavior a bit. There are Dvorak uh, uh, versions. And if we wanted to include this Dvorak version, for example, in, in the custom key map here, I would write SC because that's the name of the file here in, in the symbols directory. And in parentheses, I write Dvorak for, for that, uh, if I wanted that, for example. But I, I have specified US here because there, there exists a, a, a There exists a layout that is called US, and it's only these three uh, symbols defined here, which are these uh, exactly what I what I want. You, uh, the OAE uh, available on the third layer, because the layers uh, is not that complicated to to understand. Let's uh, bring up this one. So we have uh, we can take this key here because that have three layers uh, on this key. We have this is layer one, three, which is what you get when you press a key without any um, modifiers or anything. The normal what you get, you know, three. Layer two is shift. Uh, so that uh, and that is true for all keys. You know, uh, if you hold shift and press uh, one of the keys, you will uh, get the symbol on layer two. And then you can have a layer 3 uh, switch enabled, which often is this Alt GR, but it can be changed, which I have done here. This is not actually the Alt GR. I have specified that in, in my layout here. Uh, I use level 3 LSGT, and that stands for less and, or greater than, you know, because that's the uh, original characters on that key. LSGT. So I use that for the level 3 switch uh, and that will access layer 3 and layer 4 is if you hold shift and press the level 3 shift uh, key. I <laughs> hope you're following there. And then you can define uh, these uh, uh, symbols or uh, actions or whatever you want to call it like this. Specify a key. Uh, let's not get into these symbols and stuff, but this this uh, means uh, This is the semicolon key whatever and this is layer one and here no symbol is specified and that means this will just this will not replace What is currently on layer one on the one on this key because this is a partial uh, key map or partial symbol map and same on layer two, if you hold shift key and press semicolon uh, button. But then on uh, layer three, we have um, lowercase or the uh, eresis. And on layer four, holding shift, that will uh, get us a capitalized version of that character. So there is some detective work that you have to do if you want to create your own layouts. But as you can see, a lot of layouts are all already created. I actually had uh, a version of this I created myself. But then when I started to look into these files, I found that this layout already existed. So cool. But the VI navigation didn't exist. And I created that like, like this here. And here I specified an action layer, which actually the actions uh, doesn't print uh, characters, instead they execute uh, actions here, which can be like redirecting a key or uh, creating like a modifier on a key that shouldn't be a modifier and things like that. You can do so much things with this XKB. It's, it's, it's very, very complicated system in one way, but it's not that complicated when, when it's set up like this, you know. So this adds these uh, remaps left uh, down up and here you can see I had to add them for both the third and the fourth layer uh, so it will work if I hold shift 
uh, and the level 3 um, shift uh, modifier also and that means uh, if I do that now I hold uh, layer 3 and then I hold shift and then I press H now you can see it, then it selects text here great and these remap with the home and page up and page down nice but then I also discovered this one uh, which is a small small modification to uh, an already existing one here in the system system ones uh, I think it's the last one here this uh, control modifier uh, what that does is that it will uh, set um, use caps lock as a control modifier but it will also send the caps lock uh, symbol and I thought if I change this to escape instead then it should send the escape symbol and lo and behold it was the exact same uh, behavior as uh, I had with escape um, and I, I have tested this and it doesn't send if, if I use use it as a modifier uh, uh, like control C then it doesn't send escape but if I just press uh, caps lock it will send escape it's really cool so I could get rid of the escape dependency and I added this as a little module here so if you want to use this you just include caps escape ctrl so as you can see th this doesn't care if uh, these symbols are in the system directory or in the same symbols directory as the one we are this is because these they are loaded with uh, this command here the i option the capital i to this xkb comp command here it adds an additional uh, um, xkb directory there are other directories than these symbols here you can also define like geometry of the keyboard and you can define some other stuff here but you actually only need this uh, symbols uh, if you want to create uh, your own layout if you don't want to do something really really crazy i haven't really figured out how all of this works but uh, th this works for me now and um, maybe you can find use for this you know um, could be both useful even if you don't use a swedish keyboard but this can be kind of cool to experiment with adding like navigation to the keyboard because the nice thing here is that this is a kind of a low level uh, remapping it's like lower level than than setting a key zoom in in i3 it's very much lower than than remapping some something and then adding like a um, x2 tool to send the key and stuff this works in any program you know so so i can use the arrow keys with h j k l in any program um, and yeah don't know if it we have to go into that much more things here this typo uh, thing i included here i just included that because that that adds a lot of weird uh, characters to to this uh, third level so for instance if i hold the uh, third level switch here and, and press c i get the no it didn't work whatever or maybe it's shift no okay now it doesn't work maybe i haven't loaded this key map now because i've been uh, load KB there okay yeah I, I, I was testing out testing loading other uh, 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 configs and stuff so so now if I hold this level 3 and press C I get the copyright symbol I got on T I got trademark I got all kinds of weird uh, symbols here I can do now like this uh, I've, whatever the, I can do this one with it's a M shift uh, alt level 4 M <laughs> I don't know there, uh, there's all kinds of, of weird symbols we can do uh, this wasn't that fun I, I know ah upside down exclamation mark you know you never know upside <laughs> that's why i included this typo here why not 
You can also create your own uh, um, compose uh, keys and stuff like that, but I haven't really looked into how to create my own ones and whatever, but th that's also a cool thing. It would be, I don't know if you can create like whatever, let's not get into it. But I will leave these uh, links in the show notes to this uh, repo so you can see for for yourself. You know, it can be just useful even if you use a normal US layout or whatever. It can be nice to, to just add some, uh, like here for example, th this is um, this one uh, enables caps lock. Even if you have uh, remapped and disabled it or whatever, you can uh, now still get the act caps lock uh, functionality by pressing both shifts at the same time. And now I have a caps lock and then I press both shifts again and I cancel out of that. So things like that. And there, there are lots of weird symbols here. If you look into the files that have more than two characters, because most, most of them are like language specific, like, I don't know, here's probably Spanish. Uh, and so on, Danish, uh, but then you have like, here, here are a lot of cool control key remapping things and, and here's that euro sign, it's not that fun, but whatever. There are some, 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 some nice thing that you could enable here, if you want to. And it's really easy to do it now with, with this. And what you do when you have everything set up, then you add uh, this command to uh, load KB here to your exinit, I guess, or your restart when you restart the window manager or what, whenever you want to, to re refresh the, the, the keyboard layout. And either you just modify this bud KB and then you it will always use that or you create your own uh, symbol file and then just give it uh, give the command the path to that symbol file which have to be located in a symbols directory, a directory called symbols somewhere. That's, that's the only <laughs> dependency and that, that is kind of important because that's how XKB it's like uh, whatever. So yeah, that's what I've been doing today. Uh, I also uh, disconnected my, my fridge because that is what was causing those weird vibrating noises is that uh, because I'm, I'm recording this stuff in my kitchen. My kitchen is my office. Um, but the fridge is uh, something is wrong with it. So I, I had to disconnect it now and I have called the landlord and they will hopefully replace it here in, in soon. Uh, I also went to the been to the dentist today, um, so yeah, a good day. I also found this cool uh, uh, <laughs> old uh, uh, pictures here of uh, mammals of Australia. Which also, there's this you know, this guy <laughs> killed the parrot. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Alright, have a great day everybody, bye.